All right. So welcome to practice, everyone. It is always so fun to do these workshops. They are um, stronger and of course, more educational and informative than a group class. And part of the um, work perhaps of a workshop is to go a little bit beyond our comfort zone. Part of it is to also know the boundaries of when to stop and just honor our body. And the workshop today is called Embrace the Flow. And the reason I called this workshop Embrace the Flow, um, there's two reasons, okay? One is embracing the flow is like embracing the idea of vinyasa or embracing the idea of moving the body in a dynamic breath-based way. Um, some of the workshops we've done in the past have been a little bit more static, a little bit more um, like alignment based, which every workshop is essentially, but this one, we're going to be working on some pattern practices, which is another way of saying it's a ladder sequence that repeats itself several times so that we can um, grow our understanding of certain movement patterns. So that's kind of the most basic, uh, like reason why I named this workshop embrace the flow, but there's a deeper reason too. Okay. And Think about life lately. What has it been, right? We've had to embrace the flow of the universe. We've had to embrace the flow of the way things are going for us, whether we like it or not. And I know each and every one of us has been through quite the portal in the last, I don't know, two years, or I don't know, for me, 36 years, a lifetime, right? Life is always flowing. Life is always moving. And if we don't embrace these shifts, or if we don't embrace these um, kind of impermanent aspects of existence, we start to stagnate or we start to suffer because we're clinging to the past. So when I say embrace the flow, it's an invitation to say, keep moving, keep flowing with life. Like you're a particle of water, in a river and, and let yourself roll over. You know, you may roll over a stone or you may go through something that feels kind of stuck, but eventually if you just keep embracing the flow, you will reach the ocean. And what does that mean? It means you will reach wherever you are meant to be. You will reach your destination. And this requires strong faith. This requires strong patience with yourself. And this requires a willingness, a willingness to surrender to whatever is happening. And the way this applies to our practice is um, looking at our physical body, you know, our bone structure, our life story, our career, all of those things affect our ability to do asanas. All of those things affect how open we are or how uh, stiff we may feel. And every day is different. You know, like I think sometimes we base how our practice should be on that one time when we had like the strongest practice of our lives. How many of us have done that before? I have. It's like, I did it really well one time. Why can I not? That's not embracing the flow, <laughs> right? Embracing the flow is saying, okay, well, today is different. Today, maybe I'm meeting that stone. You know, today, maybe I'm feeling a little stuck. And the work within that is not to fight, but is to surrender and to embrace where you are. Right. So maybe you won't do every single posture that's offered today, but you can have an idea or an energy of reverence. Regardless, you can have an energy of this is me. This is where my path is leading me right now. And so I'm going to not only own that, but I'm also going to offer it. I'm going to offer it up like a body prayer coming straight from the heart out into the universe. So when we talk about embracing the flow, it's yes, we're doing vinyasa, we're moving in a flow way. Yes, yes, that's obvious, okay? But also it's like, where are you at? And if you've been in resistance, if you've been in the attitude of fight or flight, if you've been in the attitude of self-hatred or lack of self-acceptance, this is an open invitation for every single one of us to let that fall away now. And to realize that wherever we are is literally for a reason, as cliched as that sound, wherever we are is literally because this is where we are. And we have two choices. One is don't like it. And then what is life, right? What if we spend our whole life not liking where we are? And then one day pff, we are no more. Is that really how we want things to go down in the scheme of things? Or do we want to spend every day that we possibly can, possibly can, living life to its fullest, embracing where we are, who we are, as we are? And I don't know about you, but for me, I'll choose the second option every damn time. And what this means is, do you have injuries? Do you feel limitations mentally, physically? 
how can you let that come into the room with you rather than trying to keep that part separate? Like, oh, I love my whole body except my shoulder or I love my whole body except my stomach. No, no, no. Let's love our whole body with no exceptions. Let's love our whole self with no exceptions. And in this way, we train ourselves, if you will, to remember our wholeness. We train ourselves to remember that no matter how fragmented or intense things may be, deep down, there's this divine order unfolding at all times. And deep down, there's always this sense of completion and wholeness. We just have to have the right heart to feel it and the right alignment mentally to see it clearly. And this is not always easy. Guaranteed, there will be many times where we slip away from that realization. But the invitation is just to keep remembering. Remind yourself to remember that deep down within yourself, you are innately, with no exceptions, completely whole and completely where you need to be for your spiritual growth, for your awakening, and for this path, for your dharma. Okay, so welcome to practice. Go ahead and sit tall as you are ready and allow your eyes to close. And place your right hand on your heart and place your left hand on your low belly over your womb area. Let your hands rest and just begin to tune in. Begin to deepen your breathing. Whatever resonated with you, let, let that land deeply. And if it did not, you can let that go. And just begin to tune into where you are right now. Where are you physically? Tune into that. I'll share with you where I am, just so you feel you know, inspired or not alone. I woke up tired. I woke up feeling stiff. Then as the day went on, I started to feel excited to be with you all. So where are you? Name it to yourself. Where are you? This is how we create a foundation. Take a couple breaths into that honoring wherever you may be, dear ones. If there's anything you need to offload, let's inhale. Exhale a loud sigh through the mouth. <sighs> and then make your breath uniform again. And now I want you to tune into what do you aspire towards within your life? What is your aspiration? Where do you want to grow towards? For me, it's healing every layer of my being. So I remember my wholeness, no matter what. What is yours? Take a couple breaths into that. Take a deep breath in. Let out another sigh. <sighs> Make the breath uniform again. And then one more um, acknowledgement. What do you wish for the world? always taking it to that bigger picture in yoga. <laughs> What's your wish for the world? My prayer is empathy, being able to put ourselves in another's place so we can have compassion for all. What is yours? Name it to yourself wholeheartedly. <sighs> Sometimes when we do this, we feel the opposite of what is happening. Sometimes grief, anything that may be lingering there that you want to let go before we start officially, take a deep breath, sigh it out. Make the breath uniform again. And with your next breath, Transition the palms into Anjali Mudra, prayer position, the center of the heart. Let the eyes soften or be closed. And let's open our sadhana with three long ohms, 
Exhale, all of your air. Inhale. Take a breath. And as you exhale, release your palms for a moment and blink the eyes open. So the mantras in the chat, one or two of you did come in a little late. So I'm going to toss it up one more time. So it might be several times for some of you. So just go to the very bottom one. So this mantra is called the uh, Ashanti mantra, actually, a peace mantra. They call it Om Pur Namada. Okay. And I'm going to read you the, the uh, translation because it's a lot. This is what this means before we chant it, okay? You are fullness. There is fullness. Here is fullness. From the fullness, the fullness is born. Remove the fullness from the fullness, and the fullness alone remains. What that means is exactly what we talked about in the Dharma talk, that even if we feel fragmented, Deep down, there is a wholeness. That word porna means fullness or wholeness or complete, right? So when we say you are fullness, it means right now, no exceptions. You are whole and complete as you are. When we say there is fullness, there is all around the whole world. Here is fullness here right now in this moment. Everything is complete right here with all of us sitting here together. When it says from the fullness, the fullness is born, that means we all emanate from divine source and divine source continues to perpetuate itself in myriad forms, unlimited forms. Even this bottle of essential oil is of divine origin, okay? And then the last bit, remove the fullness from the fullness and fullness remains. That means, let's say that we no longer exist right? Let's say that some aspect of life that you were really attached to, something that you really love no longer exists. Even so, you are still full. Even so, the universe, life as we know it, is still completely whole and complete. So it's kind of a mind game when you think about it. Um, but deep down, what it means is everything is of divine source and nothing is um, an exception to that rule. Everything is divine you included. Okay. So let's um, say the words of the mantra first, because then we're going to chant it over and over and over. Um, so I'll say it and you say it with me. Okay. After I say it. So we know Om, of course, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purna, Mudachate. Try that one again. Mudachate, Mudachate. Por nasya, por namadaya, por nameva, vashishyate, vashishyate. Okay, it's a big one. We know the Om Shanti 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 Hi, of course. So we'll do call and response. Um, probably three times with call and response, and then we'll do three more times all together. And this is where you really may need to be reading along, okay? Because any new mantra, um, it's very helpful to see the words that will help you memorize it much faster than just trying to figure out how it's spelled in your head. Because sometimes you may be way off when you actually see it spelt in the long run, okay? <laughs> so palms can come into Anjali Mudra or hands can be anywhere that feels settled to you. Eyes are open or closed, depending on how... Um, you want to learn this, it's up to you. Here we go. I call it and I will respond it with you. Om. Inhale for Om. Om. Pur 
Purnamada, Purnamidam, together. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamurachate. Ready? Purnat, Purnamurachate. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Purnameva Vashishyate We'll skip the Om Shanti Shantihi till the very last one. Okay? Here we go. Now I'm going to say it a little less broken up. Same idea. Let's ohm together since that's easy. Inhale. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat. Purnamura chate. Inhale. Purnamada. Purnamidam. Purnat. Purnamura chate. Purnasya purnamadaya. Purnameva vashishyate. Inhale. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate. Inhale for Om. Ooh. Call in response. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat. Purna mura chate. Purna mada. Purna medam. Purna. Purna mura chate. Purna sia purna madaya. Purna meva vashishyate. Together. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate. Good. Now we're going to do it together. Let's let's go three times. The Om is always long. Okay. Ready? Inhale for Om. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamura chate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamura chate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamura chate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate. Now for the Om Shanti, inhale. 
Om Shanti 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 Let's do it two more times. And this time we'll add the Om Shanti Shanti at the end each time. So now you're going to have this complete experience that we built. And remember the meaning. Don't just go with mindless repetition. Remember the meaning. You are whole. There is whole. Here is whole. No matter what. No matter what. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Inhale. Ooh. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamura Chate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. One more. Om. Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamura. Jate Purna Sia Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Big breath for Om. Ooh. Bow the head to the heart and let it land on your heart. Breath or few, however that went, whatever that was, land in it, be with it. And as you inhale, bring the head upright. Exhale, release the palms. Bring the eyes open. Good job. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. <laughs> okay, go ahead and um, cruise onto your mat. If you showed up late, you need a strap. You need socks. You need two blocks and a blanket. So as you recline on your back, go ahead and straighten your legs. Please minimize all distractions possible. And just lay for a moment. Recline onto your back, easeful, gentle. Soften the body for a moment. And once I see the majority of us there, I will move us forward. Go ahead and stretch the arms overhead and elongate the body from end to end. Point the feet, zip the legs together with straight knees and elongate. Inhale, reaching hollow belly. Exhale, relax and take the arms down by the sides, dear ones. Push the palms down and tone the pit of the abdomen. Tone the belly a lot and curl the knees into the belly at the same time. If it hurts your back, the belly wasn't toned enough. Interlace around the shins. Hug your legs into your abdomen and gently rock a couple times side to side and just have a little dialogue. Let's see how your safe rooms are doing. Let's see how you feel. See how you can breathe with this. Start to maybe spark up a little bit of the ujjayi sound in your breathing. These are a few preliminaries to make sure we're good. Center yourselves as you are ready. Revolve twist, open the arms out to the sides, palms up, hands in line with shoulders. Kick the shins parallel to the floor. Squeeze the ankles in, inhale. Exhale, lower your legs halfway to the right. Ground your left shoulder. Inhale, bring the legs up. 
Exhale, twist the legs halfway to the left. Ground your right shoulder. Inhale, legs up. Exhale to the right three quarters of the way. Inhale, legs up. Exhale to the left three quarters of the way. Inhale, legs up. Now pause, set the feet on the floor. Scoot your hips to the left a couple of inches. So you offset, come onto the right outer hip. Once you've done that, curl the knees to the navel and lower the legs to the right. Kick the feet off your mat, like bent knees, but your feet will land on your wood floor or your carpet. Turn your head in the direction of the twist. So look to the right. Take a few breaths into the left shoulder, the left armpit chest. Margarita, kick your feet off your mat a little bit more. So they're right there. Knees at 90, hip creases at 90. Let yourself relax a little bit. One more breath here, bent knees, 90 degree angle. Squeeze the ankles in, inhale, bring the legs up using your core. Set the feet on the floor when you get there, center your hips and then scoot them to the right a couple inches. So you're going to offset and get onto that left outer hip. Once you've done so, curl the knees to the navel and lower the legs over to the left-hand side. Again, knees are at 90 degree angles, bent, of course. Turn your gaze in the direction of the twist. So look to the left, ground the right arm. Take some loving breaths into your right armpit chest. It's an area we're going to open on a very powerful level. So give yourself plenty of breath nourishment here as we get things moving. Perhaps your acknowledgements are in your awareness still, how you are, where you are, especially will come up in the beginning. It's like, hey, body, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I see it, Vic. One more breath here. Fantastic. Squeeze your legs together. Squeeze your tummy in. Inhale, bring the legs up. Set the feet on the floor and center your hips. Now, I want to demonstrate a core drill. It's different for you all. So go ahead and curl the knees into the abdomen. Catch the backs of your thighs and take a gentle rock up to seat it so I can demonstrate this for you briefly. Okay. So this is a revolve belly twist drill, drill, excuse me. And it's quite similar to the twist we just did. If you can't see me well enough, someone can tell me when I come back to the computer. So you're gonna be on your back with the hands interlaced, elbows in, legs are like perpendicular to the floor, okay? As you exhale, you lift like a sit up that you hold, inhale. Now exhale, twist your torso to the right and your knees to the left and see if you can touch your right outer thigh to your left outer elbow. Inhale, center, untwist. Exhale, twist the torso to the left, knees to the right, touch your right, your left knee to your right outer elbow. Inhale, center, exhale, twist. Okay, inhale, center, you get the idea. Okay, so as you are ready, Go ahead and recline down onto your back again. Just make sure you're all lined up, hips and shoulders in line. Curl the knees into the abdomen. Interlace your hands at the base of the skull. Hug your elbows in shoulder distance. Inhale. Exhale, do a sit up that you hold. Inhale. Exhale, twist your torso to the right and your knees to the left. Let's hold the first one, so more than one breath. Try to touch. Um, your outer thigh to your outer elbow. Keep your shoulder blades off the floor, both of them. Hug that right elbow in, right shoulder off the floor. Good, inhale, untwist, center, stay in the sit up. Exhale, twist your torso to the left, knees to the right, hold it. Touch the outer thigh to the outer elbow. Hug your left elbow in more, everyone needs to, and get your left shoulder blade off the ground, that's the work. Okay, here we go, inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. 
Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Now curl into a little ball. Think knees towards your forehead. Really lift your shoulder blades. Your hands are behind your head. You are not holding your legs. Woo! Inhale, roll down, head down, and then the feet down in that order. Good. Release the inner lock. And just take your arms down by your sides for a moment. Straighten your legs. Only three breaths of rest. You start to build some heat. Today is very much a water and fire element practice combined. So think sensitive and also strong at the same time. Now, the next core drill is something that's pretty familiar for most of us. So we're going to go into it without a demo, all right? So push the hands into the floor, legs together, belly in, and curl the knees into the abdomen. Once the knees are curled in, reach the feet straight up towards the ceiling, straight legs or straightish legs. Interlace your hands at the base of the skull. Hug your elbows in so they are shoulder distance apart. Now, before we go at this, rock your hips side to side a couple times and just try to lengthen your lower back a little bit. Make sure your sacrum is landing evenly or as evenly as possible on both sides. Okay, so the rule of thumb here is your lower back has to stay on the floor for your safety. So if it starts to curl off the floor, you don't lower your feet as much. Inhale. As you exhale, do a sit up that you hold. Now look towards your pubic bone. Commit to your drishti moving towards that direction. Inhale, legs together. Exhale, lower the legs 45 degrees to the floor. Keep your lower back down. Inhale, bring the legs up, head and shoulders off the floor. Exhale, lower the legs at 45 degrees. Lower back down. Inhale, legs up, head and shoulders still lifting. Exhale, 45 degrees or even more. Inhale, legs up. Exhale, lower. Now move in that pattern on your own. That way you can honor your breath. Head and shoulders stay off the mat the whole time. Keep your legs bones straight. Elbows are really hugged in shoulder distance. Margarita, hug your elbows in more. Look at your pubic bone the whole time, dear ones. Squeeze your ankles together. Keep your sacrum grounded. It's easy to kind of fling it off the floor when you go to lift. Keep it rooted as a good boundary. Four more. Let the breath take on a strong energy, a powerful one. Two more. You got this, everyone. Last one. Now hold the hover. Hold it. Hold that hover for 10. Look at the tip of one of your toes. Lift your shoulder blades. Nine. Breathing in, breathing out. Eight. Seven. Hold that hover. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And release onto your back. Lower the legs, lower the head and the shoulders. Good. Take a couple of breaths. So you know, breathe into the belly in specific. Okay, welcome to practice. Woo! Curl the knees into the abdomen, grab the backs of your thighs, rock up to seated, roll onto all fours and come into downward facing dog. Take your time, even though the cue came out fast, the approach does not need to be. Fingers flare, lifting up and down dog. Now let's take about a minute here and think about long cooling exhalation. So we're gonna set the tone essentially for practice. Focus on the breaths rolling with that oceanic sound, any freestyle movements to greet the body. And down dog is a great barometer pose. It's like, where do I feel really um, stuck in my body? And where do I feel really open? And then the basic acknowledgement is just to see without projecting good or bad onto these body parts. Rather just send compassion, which we call Maitri, or Karuna really is compassion, Maitri's friendliness. Send compassion to those areas that hurt just as much as you would love the areas that feel great. Center up here. 
Lift your heels high off the floor, dear ones, and tiptoe the feet forward just behind the forearms. Come into a ragdoll fold, feet hip distance apart. Catch your elbows in opposite hands. Let your head hang. Any freestyle movements here. Lila, space your feet a little wider. Anna, space your feet a little wider. Let the knees have a little bend and let the body rock. Let the breathing be profound. It's not that the breath can be deep in every pose you do, but in the poses that are less intense, it certainly um, ideally would be. Okay, and a lot of that comes from the mental discipline of staying present with yourself and your processes. Start to bring that rolling to center. Take a breath at center. Another breath there, let's all arrive. Then place your fingertips on the floor. Elongate halfway, lift, inhale. Exhale, heel toe your feet together, zip the ankles together. And fold into your legs, place your hands right by your feet and just bow straight in, you're open enough. Flatten your palms on the floor, push them down unless you're injured and it hurts, do not. Take five breaths here, hug the elbows back a little more. One, pit of the belly scoops back lightly. Two, so you fold easefully, big breaths. Three, lift up through the outer hips. Four, that's in the forward bend. Big breath, exhale, five, inhale, elongate and rise. Reach your arms straight forward. Oh, we assumed, come back down. Yeah, be present vinyasa, oh my gosh. So elongate here, okay? Ready, look forward, reach the arms straight forward, hands shoulder distance apart, keep your head level, look forward. Upward hands, inhale. Exhale, lower the arms straight forward and down. Okay, right. Now, go ahead and find your strap. And take your strap and you're gonna hold it between your hands. And you're gonna hold it what you deem is your shoulder distance apart. And you're going to pull the strap taut. Okay, and so this is gonna be our first pattern practice. We're going to repeat it three times. So stand on your mat wherever you feel best with your feet hip distance apart. Tone back the belly and all that good stuff. And make sure you're more like narrow hip distance than wide. Arms are parallel to the floor. Ready? Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, crescent to the right. Inhale, come up. Exhale, crescent to the left. Inhale, come up. Arms straight forward, fold all the way down. Let your knuckles touch the floor, bow, soften. Look forward, inhale, reach the arms straight up, pull the strap taut. Exhale, crescent to the right. Inhale up. Exhale, crescent to the left. Inhale up. Exhale, fold at center. Knuckles to the floor, head down. Inhale, rise, reach up. Exhale, crescent to the right. Inhale up. Exhale, crescent to the left. Inhale up. Exhale, fold at center, strap down, head down. Inhale, rise, pull the strap taut, reach up. Simply float the arms in front of you for a moment. Let's do this one more time. This time we're gonna hold things, step your feet together. So it's gonna be more intense. Toes are spread, feet are rooted in kind of a spacious way. You ready? Reach the arms forward, pull the strap taut, arms all the way overhead. Here we go, inhale, reach up. Exhale, crescent to the right and hold it. Look over to the left without tucking your chin. Pull the strap taut, keep moving your hips opposite of your torso. Inhale, come up. Exhale, crescent to the left, opposite side. Move your hips opposite of the Torso, keep pulling the strap taut, looking to the right under the armpit. Inhale, come up, reach up. Now exhale, fold. Let your strap just rest in front of your feet, knuckles on the floor, bow in, don't pull your legs, just 
Feel the length in your back body after the big crescent energy, head hanging. And then elongate, tone back the pit. You can bend the knees a little if you need. Reach your torso parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the floor. Come back down. Yeah, pull the strap taut, arms parallel. Send your shins forward. Feel your core. Do you feel it? Nod the strap. Do you feel it? Yes. Inhale up, reach, and simply release. Woo, feel the heat in the arms, okay? Set the strap aside. That was fantastic. And go ahead and get your block now. Okay. Take your block and place it on the flat setting. It can go mid mat. I'm going to give you a brief demo on this one because this one's a little more fickle. So please do watch. In a moment, you're going to stand with your heels on your block. Now, if you have a really thick block, you might want to use a really thickly folded blanket instead. Arms come parallel to the floor, palms face each other. Core is engaged, exhale, squat down. So the heels are on the block, balls of the feet on the mat in front. Start to reach your knees forward. Really slowly float the heels off the block. This is inhaling, exhale, land the knees, toe crusher. Inhale, rock back, heels on the block. Exhale, land, watch it one more time. Inhale, transition, knees forward. Exhale, toe crusher. Inhale, rock back regular squat, exhale, land, okay? So we're gonna do it several times. Everyone's going to be able to have a different pace. Some of us can do it really slow, others can do it really fast. So stand with your heels on the block, ankle bones together or darn close. If the block feels way too high, choose the blanket option instead, get a thickly folded blanket. Reach the arms forward parallel to the floor. Exhale, squat down. Now hold this for a moment, just feel it. It's kind of simple, palms face each other. So it's like you're squeezing something between them. Start to reach your knees forward, inhale, exhale, lower the knees to the floor in front. Good, inhale, knees to chest, ground the heels on the block, exhale. Inhale, knees forward and down, arms are parallel to the floor. Exhale, land. Inhale, knees to chest, heels on the block, exhale, land. Inhale, transition, knees forward, toe crusher, exhale. Inhale, knees to chest, exhale, regular squat. Now go with it a little bit. Find your pattern. Anna, lean forward a little more when you come forward. There we go. Inhale to transition, exhale to hold the shape. Inhale, transition, exhale, hold. That's what's up, good. I'll find your flow with it, but you know, your knees are very valuable, precious, precious tools of your body. So don't violate them. Find some love within it, some reverence. Let's try for two more. Nice, Rita, that's it. Now, the next time your knees come forward and down, I want you to hold the toe crusher squat. So I want you to hold that balls of the feet vibe and place your hands on your hips here. Okay, now stay there. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears as you inhale and roll them down the back rather strongly as you exhale. And then track your hands further behind your back, like touch your thumbs together at the sacrum. See if you can root as much of the hand onto your back as you can. It won't be the whole hand, but just, well, maybe some of you might be really open there. But try to anchor the palm. Shoulders roll back. Move the upper body forward a little bit and draw the shoulders back a little more. Soften the eyes forward and down. Three more breaths. One. Two, feel your feet. Three, release the hips. Float the arms forward parallel to the floor. Scoop your buttocks under. Lean forward a little to momentum. Inhale, exhale, back and up. Heels on the block. Woo! Inhale, stand up. Arms reach forward and up. Exhale, arms forward and down. Step off the block. So dismount. Okay. Yeah. Set the block aside. All right, everyone. So we're going to be doing a very modified version of Surya A. 
So stand at the top of the mat, feet together, or you know, a little air between them is fine. Sama sitihi. Exhale your air. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up, look forward. Exhale, fold, hands forward and down, palms to the mat, bowing in. Inhale, halfway lift, set the palms for plank. Now pause, extra breathing, spread the fingers, hands are a little forward of the feet, and then step into plank. Let's inhale. As you exhale, flip onto the tops of the feet, toenails down. Roll vertebrae by vertebrae into up dog, like you're unrolling a red carpet. Now this is not all, okay? Roll your shoulders back, keep your chin level. Inhale, now go to cobra, bend your elbows and put your pubic bone and pelvis on the floor. Inhale back to up dog, lift up, lift chin. Exhale down dog, up and back. Shorten it out an inch or two, three breaths. Look between the thighs, one. Hug the forearms in. Two. Three, lift your heels, tiptoe the feet forward, get there in one inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, palms down, head down. Look forward, reach your arms straight forward and up like you're pulling that strap apart. Simply float the arms forward and down. Samastitihi. And again, inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. Exhale, sweep the arms forward and down. Hands bow to the feet. Inhale, halfway lift, set for plank. Step opposite foot back first into plank. Inhale, exhale, flip onto the tops of the feet. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, bend the elbows, cobra. Get your pubic bone on the floor, bend more. Inhale, up dog, straighten arms, ride the escalator. <laughs> Exhale, down dog, hollow belly and lift. Good, shorten it out. So three breaths, we're building a little more fire by not taking five. One, fingertips hug the earth, like your hands are in dirt. Two, very nice form. Big breath, move the ribs. And three, fabulous, lift the heels, lead with opposite foot, tiptoe forward. Get there in one inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Elongate, look forward, sweep the arms straight forward and up. Keep your head level. Float the arms forward and down, samastitihi. Good, inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. Exhale, sweep the arms forward and down and fold. Nice, Amrita. Inhale, halfway lift, set for plank. Exhale, step into plank. No hopping, please. Inhale, level out. Exhale, flip onto the tops of the feet. Inhale, up dog, roll on forward. Cobra, exhale, bend the elbows, land your pelvis. I know, inhale, up dog, ride the escalator, chin up. Exhale, down dog, hollow belly rise. That's what's up, shorten it out a little. One, the breath is going to streamline with each one a little deeper. Two, big breath. Three, lift the heels. Tiptoeing means like take four or five steps forward, not big clunky steps. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Palms are flat, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Elongate, rise, reach your arms forward and up. I'll float the arms forward and down. We're going to add something. Please observe. All right, so that's, that's nice, right? We're not doing chaturanga for a reason. It's because chaturanga has a way of strengthening, but also really tightening the shoulder. So it won't do us many favors with back bends. Watch what is added. Watch the whole thing, okay? And then we'll have a go. Reaching up. So when we reach up without dropping our head back, it keeps us more honest, right? Arm bones draw further back. Folding down, it's all core. Bow in. And then, although you could keep your palms flat and step back, I think it's safer to step forward a little, okay? Now you're going to come in the plank and, you know, like let it be a longer plank. So you can have the wiggle the feet back a little if you want. We're going to taper the feet, kind of like we would for side plank, outside edge of left foot, right heel grounded, right hand on hip. Now here's the work. Dip the hip halfway down, lift it up. On the third one, you either hover, or you touch, you need to be careful, okay? 
push through the hand, lift, float the spare arm up, circling it forward, and then you'll change. Okay, so same thing. Pretend, you know, one, two, three, pushing, you know, climb it slowly. You'll do the same vinyasa. Dog, cobra, dog, down dog. Same three breaths. The transition forward though, please watch. See if you can grow your arms long. So your palms are flat when the feet come between the hands. Okay. Same rise and down. All right, we're gonna do that one two times and we'll be a little warmer. Ready? Exhale your air. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, arms straight forward and down. Inhale, halfway lift, set for plank. Step back with exhale, okay. Wiggle your feet back an inch or two, so it's a little longer. Swivel the heels to the left and taper the feet. So you're gonna be on the outside edge of the left foot. Stamp the right foot down all the way into the floor. Put your right hand on your right hip. So it's more contained. Now, start to dip your left hip towards the floor. If you feel like it's way too close to your hand, you need to wiggle back. Good, inhale, lift. Exhale, dip the hip down. Inhale, lift. Now exhale, dip the hip as low as you can and hold for three, two, be careful. One, inhale, push and lift back up. More than one breath, reach the right arm up. Reach the right arm forward. Spin the right hand forward and down, come into plank. Gorgeous work. Prepare your right hand for the other side. Ready? Swivel the heels to the right, your toes to the left. Taper the feet. Get the whole sole of your left foot down. Put your left hand on left hip. Crescent, yeah? Inhale. Exhale, dip your right hip halfway down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, halfway-ish. Inhale, lift. Exhale all the way ish, ish, or what is all the way for you? Hold it for three, breathing. Two, make your chin, neck happy. One, inhale, lift back up. Exhale, lift the left arm up. Inhale, exhale, extend it overhead. Inhale, hand to the mat plank. Let, settle it. Exhale, tops of the feet. Inhale, up dog. Cobra, bend the elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Yeah. Shorten it out accordingly. One, move your scapula towards your pinky fingers. Two, feel length between your ribs and your pelvis. Three, now lift your heels, commit to flat palms, tiptoe forward mindfully. Keep your palms flat as long as you can. Most of us will be lifting at some point, but try to get the feet between the hands with flat palms. There we go. Halfway lift, flat palms or fingertips. What works? Exhale, fold. Yes. Look forward, straight forward. Arms sweep. Sweep means forward and up, and then lower forward and down. Exhale. And if you circle well, that's life. Ready? Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep the arms forward and down. Bow in. Inhale, halfway lift, set for a plank. Exhale, stepping back. Okay, now it's the same old, same, same old thing, same thing. <laughs> Wiggle your feet back a little. Roll the heels to the left, toes to the right, left side, right hand on right hip. So feet are tapered. Inhale, the hips are lifted. Exhale, dip the hip towards the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, dip it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, touch the floor for three or hover, two, keep your neck happy. One, inhale, lift, exhale, reach the right arm up, inhale, extend it overhead, circle it to the floor, plank it up, inhale. Prepare, do it mindfully, other side, swivel the heels to the right, the toes to the left, right hand takes the weight, left hand on hip, inhale, crescent hip, exhale, dip your right hip towards the floor, inhale, lift. Exhale, dip the hip down, inhale, lift, and exhale, hip to the ground, or hovering is great if you are injured or just needing that. One, breathing, keep your neck happy. Two, 
three, inhale, lift, reach the top arm, exhale, inhale, reaching it forward, plank position. Exhale, tops of the feet. Inhale, up, doggy. Ready? Cobra, bend the, bend the elbows. Yep. Inhale, up, dog. Woo. Exhale, down, dog. Good. Three breaths. Let's see the ribs move. So I'm taking up space. Embodiment. One. Forearms keep hugging in. That's going to put your upper arms where they need to be. Two. Reach your heels down to the floor if it's in your range. Three, lift the heels high, tiptoe forward. Try to get that same flat palm. So it's going to train us to have a lot of length in our side waist. Uh -huh. Halfway lift, inhaling. Exhale, fold. Look forward, reach your arms straight forward. Reach up like you're pulling that strap apart. Beautiful. Lower the arms forward and down, stay upright to Samasthiti. Okay, so that's fun, right? All right, next demonstration. This is um, a pattern squat drill and it's deceptively hard. So please give me your eyes. You're gonna have a little bend in the knees. We'll curl the right knee in. And then we're going to start to hinge forward. Like we're reaching our right leg back, but instead of coming into warrior three, you're going to tap your right knee and shin to the floor. Don't sit all the way down on the heel. It can be hard on the knee. Then you're gonna to start to lift back up, push the feet down, lift the buttocks, balance, float the right foot, curl the right knee to the belly and set the foot down. Okay, let's do it together. So if you need a visual aid, I'm here. Stand on your mat with your feet together. If it's not clear, I'll know right away. Hands on the hips. Bend your knees a little, prepare, left foot grounding. Inhale, curl the right knee into the belly. Exhale, start to hinge forward, extra breaths. You're gonna need them. Start to thread the right knee to the outside of the left ankle. Tap the shin and foot down, knee down, drop your buttocks back and then push the left foot down. Inhale, start to stand, curl the right knee back to the belly. Set the right foot down. Let's do the other side. Ooh, legs burn, yeah? Right foot spread and anchored. Little bend in the knee. Inhale, curl the left knee in. Exhale, start to hinge like warrior three. Flirt with it, but then thread the left knee to the outside of the right ankle. Shin down, knee down. Drop the buttocks. Push the feet down. Inhale, start to stand. Float that left foot up. Curl the knee in. Inhale. Exhale, set the foot down. Other side, balance on left foot. Inhale, curl right knee in. Exhale, hinge forward a little. Thread the right leg behind your left ankle. Chin and knee down. Good, inhale, lift back up. Float the right foot up before you come forward. Curl the knee in. Exhale, set the foot down. Left knee curls in, inhale. Exhale, thread it back. Multiple breaths, keep breathing. Tuck it behind the ankle. Yes, beautiful. Come up when you're ready, inhale. Curl the knee into the tum. Exhale, set the foot down. Balance on the left foot, inhale, curl the right knee in. Exhale, hinge forward, start to thread the right leg back. Tuck the right knee behind the left outer ankle. Inhale, come back up, take your time loves. Curl the knee in, set the foot down, exhale. Right foot grounding, inhale, curl the left knee in. Exhale, start to hinge, thread the leg back a little, tuck the knee behind the ankle, tap the foot down. Inhale, come up, curl the knee into the abdomen. Exhale, set the foot down. One more time on each side, ground left foot. Inhale, curl right knee in. Exhale, hinge, thread the leg back, touch the knee to the outer ankle. Inhale, lift up. I know. Keep that heel grounded. Curl in. Exhale, set the foot down. One more. Right foot grounding. Inhale, curl the left knee in. Exhale, thread it back. Get it to the outside of the ankle. Keep the heel grounded. Inhale, back up. Belly, belly. Foot hugs earth. Curl in and release samastitihi, okay. Did your legs burn? Yes? Okay, good. Now 
going forward from here, I'm gonna do some more pattern practices. So this one we can do together. Feet together and hands on the hips. Be, or, be near the front of the mat, okay? Feet are anchored, little bend in the knees just for balance control. Balance on your left foot, curl the right knee into the belly, really pull it in. So we call this standing wind relieving pose. Inhale, exhale, hinge forward like warrior three this time. Reach your right leg back, keep a bend in that left knee. Inhale, exhale, step back into a high lunge, ball of right foot, roll into it, bringing the torso upright. Feel free to keep a little bend in that back knee so your lower back feels happy or not. Inhale, exhale, come into goddess pose. So turn your body to the long end of the mat, to the right, ground the right heel and bend the knees. You're gonna be duck footed, toes turn out. Hands stay on hips, inhale, transverse lunge, rock over into your right leg. Keep your right heel grounded and point your left big toe on the floor. Now inhale, come through center, high goddess. Exhale, transverse to the left, bend the left knee. Take your time, more than one breath to learn. For real, for real, point the right toes, lean the torso forward. Push through the feet, inhale, come through high goddess. Exhale to the right once more, point the left foot down. Inhale, come through high goddess, this isn't what you think. Turn forward back to high lunge, left foot forward, ball of right foot. Lean over your front leg a little, lift the right leg like warrior three. Inhale, exhale, curl the right knee to the belly, standing wind relieving pose, inhale. Exhale, samastitihi, lower the arms too to clear it. Good, hands on hips, right foot grounds, little bend in the knee, inhale, curl the left knee in. Exhale, treat it like warrior three, start to straighten the leg and reach back. Inhale. Exhale, glide into high lunge, ball of back foot. More than one breath for this first one, okay? Find your bearings, big breath. Swivel to the left, face the long end of the mat, high goddess. Duck footed, inhale. Exhale, transverse lunge, bend the left knee, lean the torso forward to the inside of the left leg. Inhale, up through high goddess. Exhale, bend the right knee, lean the torso forward. Inhale, high goddess. Once more to the left, exhale, bend that left knee. Hinge forward. Inhale, high goddess. Exhale, swivel the feet forward, high lunge. Inhale. Exhale, lean over the front leg a little. Lift the back leg, warrior three. Inhale. Exhale, curl the left thigh to the belly, standing wind. Inhale. Exhale, set the foot down, lower the arms. Okay, it went well, right? So now we make it a little more dynamic as if that was possible, but it is. So feet together. Here's this thing, reach your arms forward and up. Hands are shoulder distance. Visualize you have that strap that we pulled apart, okay? Ground the left foot, inhale, curl the right knee in. Exhale for warrior three, sweep your arms back like airplane wings, right leg reaching back. Inhale. Exhale, arms forward, land in the lunge, arms overhead, high lunge. Inhale, exhale to the right, high goddess, arms out to the sides. Okay, you ready for this? Rock into the right foot, reach your left arm over to the right. Transverse lunge, drop your buttocks towards your right heel. Stay on the right, but reach your arms to the left like a circle. Okay, now look to the right, reach your arms to the right, come overhead, high goddess, inhale. Exhale, bend your left knee. Arms go to the left until they circle to the right. You got it? Good. Inhale, reach the arms to the left, overhead, high goddess. Exhale to the right, circle the arms. Now, here we go. Inhale, come up, high goddess, hold it. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, lunge, pivot forward, arms overhead. Exhale, airplane wings, lift the right leg up, warrior three. Inhale. Exhale, wind relieving, curl the right knee in, arms overhead, inhale. Exhale, samastitihi, arms down, foot down. Good. Okay, other side. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale. Inhale, curl the left knee in. Exhale, warrior three, airplane arms. 
Inhale, exhale, arms forward, high lunge, arms overhead. Inhale, exhale, pivot to the left, high goddess, hug the sky, inhale. Start to rock to the left, reach your arms to the left, sink into the left heel, then circle the arms to the right. So hold it for a moment so you really feel it. Looking to the right, point your right toes. Now look to the left, circle the arms to the left, overhead, high goddess, inhale, sink to the right, arms circle to the right till they reach left, hold it, bend that right knee. Ready, inhale, arms to the right, come overhead, high goddess, to the left once more, exhale, sinking in. Inhale, come up, high goddess, arms open. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, pivot forward, high lunge. Exhale, arrive. Inhale, extra breath here. Warrior three, airplane the arms, lift the back leg up, inhale. Wind relieving, curl the left knee in, arms overhead, big breath. Samastitihi, float the arms, lower the foot. Take a breath or two. Put your heart rate up. Feel the prana moving in your body, that flow, embrace it. So let's do one more of these with eagle and eagle arms, okay? Exhale, bend the knees, open the arms like cactuses. Inhale. Exhale, right arm under the left. Eagle arms, elbows at shoulder height. Ground the left foot. Cross the right leg over the left like eagle pose. Keep your forearms right in front of your nose so they're right at the center line. Squeeze the pelvic floor on this one, dear ones. Keep your arms crossed. Unwind the right leg, curl the right knee into the belly. Inhale. Warrior three with eagle arms. Hold it. Flare the right toes. Square the right hip down. Inhale. Exhale, glide into the lunge with the eagle arms. Feel free to wiggle that right foot back a little if you need. Roll the buttocks down. See if you can take a little back bend. Keep hugging the outer hips in. Squeeze the arm and grow the heart up. Look beyond the fingertips. Inhale, center that back bend. Exhale, pivot to the right, high goddess, ground the right heel. Keep your arms, inhale. Exhale to the right, transverse lunge. Lean the torso down, let's hold this one. Point your left toes on the floor. If you have your right ribs close to your right thigh, see if you can bring your eagle arms to the floor. So the outside line of that left arm, the left pinky finger. Take a breath, let it out. Good, swivel to the right and then come up through high goddess. Inhale, exhale to the left. Make sure the stance is long enough. Lean forward and hold. It's like your left uh, ribs are close to your left thigh. Left pinky on the floor, left forearm, left elbow, maybe. Good, inhale to the left and up, high goddess. Exhale to the right and down. One more time, tap the forearms. Inhale, come up through high goddess. Eagle arms, exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, pivot forward, high lunge. Exhale, arrive. Inhale, exhale, hinge over your front leg, lift the back leg, inhale, warrior three. Exhale, start to come forward, <laughs> eagle. Find it. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, unwind, set the foot down, float the arms to the sides. That one was a little harder, huh? Okay, one more. Go ahead and take a breath. Exhale, bend the knees, cactus the arms. Inhale. Exhale, left arm, or excuse me, yeah, left arm under the right, my bad. Opposite. <laughs> Ground the right foot down. Curl the left knee in, inhale. Eagle, exhale, cross your left thigh over your right. Squeeze the legs. Hold steady. Elbows are at shoulder height. Fingers reach straight up. Inhale, unwind the left leg, curl the knee to the belly. Exhale, warrior three with eagle arms. Thread the leg back, flare the toes, hold it. Clip that right hip back and in, inhale. Exhale, glide into high lunge, ball of back foot. You know, feel into the feet, scoop the buttocks down. If the back bend is there, if the balance is there, take it. Big breaths. Keep clipping the outer hips in. Lift the elbows, lift the heart. 
Inhale, calibrate back to center. Exhale, spin the left heel down, turn to the left. High goddess, bend the knees. Inhale, exhale over to the left, transverse lunge. Bend the left knee, lean forward, right forearm to the floor. Inhale to the left and up, high goddess. Exhale to the right and down, forearms to the floor. Inhale to the right and up, high goddess, eagle arms. Exhale to the left and down, forearms touch. Inhale, come up, high goddess. Exhale, bend your knees. Inhale, turn forward, high lunge. The feet have to wiggle, yeah? Exhale here, big breath. Exhale, lean towards your front leg. Lift the back leg up, warrior three. Inhale, exhale, curl the knee to the tummy, eagle, cross and land. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, unwind, float the foot and arms to the sides. Take a couple breaths. So that's an example of a pattern drill. Do you feel the heat? Yes? Oh yeah. We're embracing the flow. Okay. Go ahead and get your strap. And I want to demo. If you've been coming to Thursday class, chances are you've done this, but especially those of you um, from afar who are getting the recording, uh, make sure you watch. And even if you've done it before, maybe it's a good idea to watch, okay? So strap is our best friend today. This is for warrior three, What you're going to do, and just watch for a moment, take the strap behind the back. You're holding an end in each hand. So it's really important, it's unlooped. Um, if you came early, you, you heard that, but if you didn't, go ahead and unloop it now. You're gonna hold the strap with straight arms. Just watch. It's gonna dangle down by the heels, not like hanging on the floor though. It's just barely by the heels. Weight's gonna be in the left foot. I'm gonna slip the arch of the right foot in the strap. The right foot's gonna be a little back from the left already. Hold the strap pretty tight. So you can kind of wrap your hand around it if you want. A little bend in your left knee. This is gonna help you square your hips and start to hinge forward. Kick the right foot into the strap and lift the leg. Keep the right hip squared down and lift your heart. And you can see those little adjustments change things. So when you go to come into the posture, Think little by little and lift. Maintain control to come back to Samastitihi. Okay, let's do this. Stand in Samastitihi, strap in hands. Take the strap behind your back. Dangle it down to your heels. Slip the right foot back and loop the arch of the right foot in the strap. Hold it taut, okay? Bend the left knee a little, ready? Inhale to initiate, tip the torso forward as you float the right leg back and up. Keep pushing the heel into the strap, have control by keeping that left knee bent. If the left leg is straight, chances are your hips are not squared. Hog the left outer hip and lift your hands a little higher than your hips. You can lift higher than I can, I bet on that. Push the foot into the strap and pull on the strap. Lift the heart a little more, I know, I know. But come forward and out of it, inhale. Set the foot down, exhale. Chain sides when you're ready. Yay, reach your left foot back, loop it. Calm and collected, little bend in the right knee, ready when you are, inhale to take it forward. As you lean the trunk forward, lift the leg. It's a different warrior three, isn't it? Crystallize it, hug that right outer hip in, the outer hip strong, clip it in. Surf that balance. The neck straight. Lift the arms, lift the heart a little more. Good. When you're ready, come out. All right, that's fun, isn't it? So now the next thing, you can kind of set the strap down for a moment. I have to demo one more time on this one, okay? So give me your eyes. Teachers in the room, feel free to take notes. Sounds so ego, oh, take notes. But really, if there's new stuff and you wanna take it into your classroom, why not? So here's what's gonna happen, all right? This is a finicky one for real. So in a moment, you'll kneel in toe crusher squat and you'll get the strap around the arches of the feet. And you've gotta have an even amount of tail, even amount of strap on each side. So it might take you a minute to find that. 
And this is the interesting part. You're gonna pin it with your hands. Keep your booty up. Come into like a heart chakra landing or Ashtangasana and then wiggle where you for. So you have to keep the strap around your feet. And hold the strap really tight between the feet and the hands, okay? Balls of the feet. Exhale, anchor your pubic. Inhale, lift the head, chest, legs, arms lifting. And you pull on the strap and lift. And if you can tighten it, just wrap it around your fingers. Pull on it. You can breathe, of course. We'll rest for a moment. We'll do it one more time. Because after you've done all that work, you might as well do it twice. Okay. So strap is in hand. Squat down near the back part of your mat in toe crusher squat. So you're on the balls of your feet. And then reach the strap behind you and loop it around the arches of your feet. And then you've got to figure out the equal length between the tails. You need as much strap as you can. If your strap's not long, you got to get it scarf and tie it on okay place your hands as far forward as you can now like all fours with the strap around the feet you ready booty up inhale bend the elbows and place your chest between your thumbs now hold that strap and slide your heart forward there you go aim wiggle worm forward oh it's super interesting if your strap is super short we may have to work with this okay you're on your belly now your hips are down right you have to get your hips down. There we go. Yeah. Straighten your arms and toe the line. Walk the hands down the straps. You have straight arms. You're on the balls of your feet, dearest ones. You ready? Exhale, anchor your pubic bone. Inhale, lift chest, shoulders, head, of course, then the feet. There you go. There you go, Rita. Work with it. I know. The patience is profound in this group. Soft drishti. However, I don't think looking straight down the nose is that helpful in these poses. Look a foot in front of you and see if that gives you an inch or two more to aspire. Good, lift the feet, pull on that strap. That's it, beauties. Wherever you are, can you accept your wholeness? Can you love yourself? Good, now roll down, try to keep the strap, put your forehead on the floor and rest for a moment, but don't lose the... Uh, opening. If you point your feet, you're going to lose it. Well, who am I to say? You might not, but let's just, let's just say this. You don't want to have to set it up again, right? Are you ready? Lift your head a little bit now. Lift your chest a little bit now. Roll your shoulders a little bit back. Now anchor your pubic bones. That's a way of saying tuck your tail. Inhale to lift again. Twice as nice. What's new? This time, instead of lifting your chest, um, um, super big amount, lift your feet more. That, there's always a compromise for most of us unless you're a contortionist. So lift your feet, drive the heel or the heels back and pull on the strap and just see, keep your legs straight. Keep the struggle out of the mind. Even if the body's struggling, mind is peaceful. Three more breaths, try to cr tall, you know, crawl the hands towards the feet. Mm-hmm, straight elbows. Inhale, lift, exhale, release. Now you can drop the strap. Take a breath or two. Fantastic, everyone. And then as you're ready, place the palms under the shoulders. Push to all fours. Then you're gonna move the strap. Get the strap out of your energy field. Come to down dog when you're ready. Some of you already did that, so. Whenever you're ready, meet us in dog and just take a moment and see how this practice has landed in your lower back so far. All right, feeling warm, feeling strong. Try to lengthen the side waist by reaching your chest back as you reach your heels down. Okay, same, same. Lift your heels and tiptoe the feet forward between the hands. Bring it on. Yeah, halfway lift now, fingertips. Go ahead and create that room. Exhale, fold, palms down, head down. Same arm reach, reach straight forward and up. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. Reach your arms forward into the side, Samastitihi, equal standing pose. Okay, get your strap again. Surprise! Okay, so now we'll do some shoulder flossing. We're starting to turn a corner. 
okay, in this practice where it's going to become way more backbend centric pretty soon. So shoulder flossing is something that I don't take lightly and neither should you. It's very strong. And if you have injuries, you need to be extra slow. So I want you to start with the strap in hands. Feet hip distance is a good measurement for most of us. And pull the strap taut and have, have the hands about six inches wider than the shoulders or more if you have a tendon injury in your shoulder. Okay, like some of us, I know we do. So you might need to be super wide and that's all good. Okay, so try to have a generous spacing, belly in, you know, best you can. Together now, inhale, reach the arms straight up. And then I want you to take the strap behind your back. So most of us are gonna need to bend the elbows, draw the elbows towards the side waist and drop the hands down by the buttocks, drop the strap by the buttocks. There you go, and then reverse. Most of us are bending our elbows, reach the arms overhead, bring the strap forward and down, okay? Do it again at that spacing. Inhale up, exhale down and back. Inhale up, exhale forward and down. Now, if it's easy, you can tighten it a little. If it hurts, I want you to be honest with yourself and don't push it, okay? And then continue this drill. So this is a really great way to prepare you to flip your grip. okay if the arms don't move completely symmetrically if you are really having an easy time you can bring your hands closer together if you're anything like me it's like some months it feels really good some months it feels like i need to be really careful so just keep it honest with yourself do a few more Inhale to transition, exhale to land. Inhale, transition, exhale to land. Three more. Try to keep your pelvis neutral. That's challenging when you go to come forward. Some of it, you can keep your arms straight the whole time. That's a bone structure thing though. So if it's not happening, don't force it. One more. Ready? And back over. The strap comes down in front. Ooh, okay. We're done with this for a while. So set it aside. All right, next pattern practice. Can you believe it? We're doing more. I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit closer. So this one is related to wild thing and all of these other great kind of swivelly poses, all right? So I'm going to show you, like when you decide where I need to be. So please watch, cause it's a lot. I'm gonna come into down dog in a moment. You'll take your left leg up, you'll spin open. You're going to set it up like wild thing, but instead of lifting the hips, you're gonna lower your buttocks. Look to the left, the left hand, I know I need to fix my camera. I'll do that in a moment. The left hand goes just behind the hips, about a foot, foot and a half back. Turn your right toes down and lift the hips. Fall in triangle. Okay. Put the foot down, land your butt. Right hand a foot and a half behind the right hip. Wild thing. Keep it mellow. Watch it again. I'm going to scoot over so you can see me better. So I'm here. Watch it again. Lift. Sitting to the left. Left hand is behind the left buttocks. Start to lift, spin the right toes down, kind of like the back leg of warrior two, fall in triangle. Set the left foot down. One more time for the demo. Inhale, lift, wild thing. Exhale, sit to the left, spin the right foot down, fall in triangle. To complete it, you hit up wild thing, keep it mellow, come into down dog, okay? So it's, it's pretty <laughs> interesting. It's gonna take a minute. So give it that minute, whatever it takes. Come into down dog, go straight there. All right, downward dog. Take a breath and let it go. Inhale, stretch the left leg up to the sky. Exhale, spin the left hip open and bend the knee. Reach the heel for the butt. 
Inhale, start to take the left foot into wild thing. Land the left foot, drop your buttocks to the floor. You're on the outside edge of the right foot. Let lower your butt. Now look to the left. Put your left hand on the floor behind your left hip. Sweep the right arm across the chest. Spin the right foot down and lift. Fall in triangle. Kick your left leg under your right. If you miss the demo, you need to watch. Exhale, sit. Right hand behind the right buttocks. Inhale, lift, wild thing, baby. Exhale, take a seat. Turn to the left. Put your left hand behind your left hip. Spin the right toes down and lift. Fall in triangle. Exhale, sit. Outside edge of right foot. Right hand behind the right hip. Inhale, lift, wild thing. Exhale, sit. Look to the left. Left hand behind the butt. Fall in triangle. Spin the right heel down. Lift, kick the left leg under. Exhale, sit. Right hand behind the right hip, wild thing. Don't push it yet. Down dog, flip it over. So if you miss the demo, you probably wanna take some time to watch and then go for it, okay? Take a moment, lower down onto your knees. Is it making sense? Thumbs up. Is it not making sense? Okay, another demo, because some of us said, what the hell is going on? So if it was making sense, well, that's okay. Watch anyway, okay? And I'm actually gonna turn my mat. I knew this would be tough. Um, and I also knew it's possible for this group. So that is the reality we are working with. So that's why we call it a pattern practice is because it kind of invokes this state of hmm, meditation or they might call it trance in some places. Okay, so watch the other side for a moment. Come into three-legged dog. You spin open, bend the knee. Instead of taking this big wild thing, you sit. Look to the right, right hand behind the right hip. Spin the left foot down, lift, kick the right leg under, fall in triangle. Put the right foot back on the floor, sit, swivel to the left, wild thing, inhale. Exhale, sit, swivel to the right, right hand behind. Inhale, spin that left foot down, lift. Exhale, sit, wild thing. You get the idea, down dog, okay? So the idea is we're doing it three times. Does it make more sense now that you've seen it twice? Yeah, okay, I know one of you lost your internet. So we're back, down dog, got this. This is just the beginning, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Inhale, stretch your right leg up. Go for it, even if you don't get it. You know when you're in dance class and you don't get it, but you're having fun? Yeah, that. Exhale, spin the hip open, bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, land it in baby wild thing. Okay, now lower your butt, look to the right. Put your right hand a foot and a half behind your right buttocks. Spin the left heel down, inhale, lift, fall in triangle. Kick that bottom leg over to the side, good, put the foot on the floor, sit, left hand behind the left hip, wild thing, inhale, lift up, exhale, lower your buttocks to the ground, dear ones, put your right hand behind your right buttocks, a foot and a half back-ish, spin the left toes in and down like warrior two, kick the right leg under the left, now we got it, good, bend the knee, exhale, sit, left hand behind the left hip, inhale, lift, wild thing, exhale, sit, Put the right hand behind the right buttock, spin the left toes down and in, inhale, fall in triangle. Vic, you're loving it, I see it. Exhale, put down, sit. Left hand behind the hip, now lift into wild thing. And downward dog, exhale. Woo, take a breath or two. If there were any feelings of confusion or whatever, hey, I'm not surprised, but also you got this, got this. Okay, now. We're going to take a vinyasa. So inhale, roll into plank. Exhale, flip onto the tops of the feet. Inhale, upward facing dog, shoulders back. Cobra, bend the elbows, lower your pelvis. Keep your tailbone tucked. Inhale, up dog, shoulders. Exhale, down dog. Good. Okay. Let's try this 
uh, build without a demo. And if I see some confusion, I'm going to demo. Okay, I think we got it though. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. And let me say something, with these breath cues, I may only cue the initial entry breath, but then if we hold something past one breath capacity, please take it upon yourself to keep it moving. Exhale, spin the left hip open and bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, wild thing, hold it. Turn the right toes out to the side. Bend both knees a little. Push the right hand down and lift your hips. Open your heart, tip the heart to the sky, reach the left arm towards the floor. Now calibrate out, ground that right foot, the right knee is bent. Curl the left knee up like side plank, so cliffhanger, left knee to the sky. Look to the mat, spin the left hand down to the mat, swivel onto the ball of your right foot, fall in triangle, spin the right heel down, kick the left leg under the right, reach your right arm up. Inhale. Exhale, back to side plank. Spin the right hand down again. Ball of right foot. Keep the left knee curled in, kind of floating. Swivel the right toes, you know, to point to the left. Side plank, left knee up, left arm up. Push off the right hand, inhale. Look forward. Ball of right foot, step your left foot forward into a lunge. Lower the back knee and point the back foot. It is your left foot forward. Okay, we good? Pause here, push the top of the right foot down and roll the right thigh forward and in a little more. So you can lift the right knee to do that. Right knee is on the ground, hug the feet in and climb the hands up onto the front thigh. Recover. <laughs> so if you're new to that kind of circular vinyasa, it's gonna take a minute. So self-compassion, okay? Think about rolling the hips forward, and lifting the upper body up and away from the front thigh. Bend your back knee. Reach your right hand back and catch the instep of the foot. Stay there or bend the right elbow and find that half frog arm. You're gonna pivot the right palm out and forward. So the fingers point in the same direction as the tips of the toes. Reach your right heel towards your glute. If you contact your glute, spin the left hip back more and bring the right heel to the outside of the right hip. Maybe the toes can touch the ribs. Now look to the right. Cross your left arm across your tummy and catch the top of the right foot. Keep your hips squared. Reach your right hand down and grab your right knee. Let your right toes hook up into your right armpit. Get a good grasp. If it's slipping, fix it. Okay. And once you get it stable, look forward and reach your left arm up. If you don't go that far, stay where you stop. Square the right ribs forward best you can. Soft eyes forward. Maybe three feet in front of your mat. Now gently ease out of it. Put your left hand on your left thigh. Slip the right hand off the leg, off the foot. Frame your front foot between your fingertips. Lift your back knee off the floor. See your right heel in line with your right hip. Ground your right hand on the mat a little bit in front of your right shoulder. Okay, fingers are spread and all that good stuff. Side plank, look to the left. Reach your left arm straight out to the side, kind of hovering the hand parallel to the floor. Start to drag the left foot back. Spin the sole of the right foot to the floor by turning the toes out and float the left leg up, cliffhanger side plank. Look up to the sky if you have the balance. Wild thing, exhale, land the left foot, ripple into it, lift the hips. If your left hand touches the floor, just touch it lightly, don't connect, just touch. Inhale, exhale, flip it, downward facing dog. Woo, take a breath, let them go. Okay, we've got this, some way, shape or form. Inhale, right leg up to the sky, three-legged. Exhale, spin the hip open, bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, wild thing, ball of the foot, rolls to the floor, turn the left toes out, slightly back, little bend in both knees, rock the pelvis back and up and open the chest. Inhale, 
Now start to calibrate out of it a little bit. Bend that left knee a lot. So the left big toes down and lift the right knee to the sky. Bashisthasana. Spin the right hand down onto the right side of the mat. Ball of left foot, fall in triangle. Spin the left heel down to the right, like the back leg of warrior two. And kick the right leg under the left. Left arm up or wherever it lands. Inhale. Curl the right knee back in, side plank. Plant the left hand on the left side of the mat. Swivel across the ball of your left foot. Turn the toes back to the right. Float the right knee up, right hand up, inhale. Exhale, look forward. Curl the right knee towards the ribs. Step forward into a lunge. Yeah, lower the back knee down. Point the back foot. Take a moment, that's a lot. Push the top of the back foot down and roll the outer hip forward a little. Hug the feet in, climb the hands to the front thigh when you're ready. Calibrate with breath. It's all blessed. You're doing great. Heart wide. You can square that left thigh forward a little more if the kneecap feels funky. Bend your left knee. Reach your left hand back, thumb up, and catch the instep of the foot, the inside line. Stay there or bend the left elbow. Come into that half frog arm. Pivot the left palm out. Fingers swivel out till they point forward. Try to have the palm on the toe knuckle, not the toe nail. Clip your right hip back a little more and press the left heel to the left outer hip. Ground yourself. Stay right here or look to the left. Keep clipping that right hip back. Reach the right arm across the tummy and catch the top of the back foot. Keep holding it. Dip to the left a little bit and bring your left hand to your left kneecap. Hook the toenails into the armpit. If you're sweaty, just do your very best. Once you are stable, look forward and then reach the right arm up. Push the leg into the arm. Try to square the left ribs forward. They will not square completely though. Keep stamping that right heel down. Inhale, exhale, release the leg. Fingertips frame the front foot. Ball of back foot, lift the back knee off the floor. See the left heel in line with the hip. Plant the left hand down. Have it a couple inches forward of your shoulder joint. Side plank, look to the right. Float the right arm parallel to the floor. Start to drag the right foot back. Spin the left heel down to the floor. Bend the left knee so the left big toe comes down and float the right leg up. Cliffhanger side plank. Look at the right thumb. Wild thing, land the ball of the right foot. Express the back bend, push the left hand down. Keep your left arm straight. Feel the shoulder swivel. Tap your right fingertips to the floor, but don't connect. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath, let it go. Another one. Inhale, roll into plank. Exhale, lower knees. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, chest to the floor between the thumbs. Slide the legs back and lay on your tummy. Okay, let's do something familiar. We need a break. Take the arms by the sides. Stretch each leg back a little. So there's room in the hip flexors. Head is off the floor. Bend the knees. Lift the chest, anchor pubic bone, and catch the ankles. Keep your chest lifted now. Flex the feet hip distance today. Exhale, anchor your pubic bone and kick back, lift your chest. Kick your feet way back, lift your heart. Get as much of that upper body isolation as you can. Hug the knees in and then drive the heels up towards the ceiling in bow pose. Good, dwell in the familiar. Concentrate. Hug the knees in a little. Drive those heels up, pow. Engage the glutes. Think glutes and heels up. Come onto your navel a little more, pow, and lift the heels. Navel and heels up. There it is. Hug in. Exhale, release. Take a rest. Pew. Pillow or turn a cheek. You decide. <sighs> Catch your breath. That was powerful. Probably these pattern drills with the wild thing and side planks are harder. They take some time. 
Turn your head the other way if you do have it turned, which every single one of you chose that. So go ahead and turn the other way. Couple breaths. With love, with reverence. Okay, straighten your head. Place your hands under your shoulders. Make your way to down dog. You choose your, your exit. Could be simple. It could be your own little calling there. Mm-hmm. Downward dog. Up and back we roll, dear ones. Inhale. Exhale, lower your knees to the floor. Okay, congrats. Get your socks and uh, have a seat and put the socks on. Okay. Take your time. I am sure we are very sweaty in this moment. So just easy. Go ahead and sock up. And you won't need them for a very long duration. It's just for one drill. Um, so if that means anything to you, <laughs> you don't have to be super picky. Now, once you have your socks on, I know this is easier said than done with the humidity. Go ahead and stand up and ditch your mat for a moment. Move it out of the way and get your blocks. So we're gonna do a Hanumanasana drill. We may or may not know this. This might be fresh information, but I have a feeling most of us are semi-familiar. Give me your eyes anyway just for prosperity purposes, okay? Meaning, so you, you really do know what's up. All right, so I have no mat, that's important. Blocks are gonna go on the middle setting. The feet will be just behind the blocks, as you can see. We're gonna to start to slide the legs apart at the same time. Stay on the ball of your back foot, pull in, feet meet, same place where you started. Exhale, land, inhale, transition. Exhale, land. And we're gonna do it, let's say we do it five times on each side. And the most important thing is that you don't do this, right? You don't lean, pulling in, okay? So go ahead and stand just a little bit behind your blocks. Hinge down and place your hands on the blocks. Ankles together. Are your blocks on the middle setting? Ready? Slide the left leg forward and right leg back. Inhale, transition. Exhale, land where you are. Ball of foot, don't come off of it. Inhale, legs together, right where they started. Exhale, change. Stay on the ball of that back foot. That's gonna keep you real honest here. Inhale, legs together. Exhale, change. Inhale, together. Exhale, change. And go at it, yeah? Be loving. Here's that wholeness energy. Can you feel grateful for what you have? Take any ideas that it needs to be different out. It's hard to do, but it is very possible to do if you practice and cultivate self-acceptance. So you know that advanced image you've seen of your teacher doing something, although that may guide where you're going, it's not really that helpful. Where are you? Where are you? That's what we care about right now. Cycle through, dear ones. And the next time you have your left leg forward, I want you to hold it. So the next time the left leg is forward, go ahead and hold the Hanumanasana. If you're there a little longer than your neighbor, it's not a big deal. Now micro bend that front knee. We're holding now left leg in front. Drop your tail down a little bit. Let that back knee touch the floor. There we go. Draw the shoulder heads back and feel, I don't want to say pride, we call that asmita in yoga, it means like egoic pride, but do um, find santosh or contentment here. Hey body, love you, grateful. You can hear William sneaking out of the laundry room door right now. Very polite. All right, ready? Lean into the blocks, inhale, drag your legs together. Exhale, changing. Hold it. When you get there, you hold. 
So let's have kind of the same loving approach. You're, unless you sit all the way down, you micro bend the front knee and drop your buttocks. So we're looking for that neutral pelvis, which is something we've often worked towards. Draw the shoulder heads down and back. Good, Emrita. Make sure the elbows feel even. Vic, you probably could just move the blocks forward for a moment. Cultivating santosh or santosha, contentment. Ball of back foot, keep it that way. That way you don't overstretch a ligament in your sacrum. Ready, inhale, bring it on in. Legs together, feet near, you know, behind the blocks by a little. Go ahead and catch your ankles and bow for a moment because, you know, you might feel welcome. And then look forward, reach the arms straight forward and rise. Inhale, reach up, head level, and simply float the arms forward into the sides. Okay, that was it with the socks. So let's take the socks off. Set them aside. And, you know, you don't have to fold them or anything unless that's your personality. I'm going to give myself a moment to do that as well. Okay. Once you've done that, obviously you're going to um, move your blocks and get your mat unfolded again. Okay. Once the mat is unfolded, we have one more pattern drill with the wild thing. And I do feel it's important I demonstrate this one so you can come near your screen. And I will show you. So this is something that is a very well-known sequence, but it's often not very well executed, okay? So we're working on executing it safely. I'm gonna go to three-legged dog. We spin open. We take a moment in wild thing. Now you can take it much deeper if you have it like automatically, but you have to have the strength to come out, okay? Curl the knee in, reach the arm up, kick the foot up and grab the big toe, spin open, and then look towards the right hand, belly in, swivel onto the ball of your right foot, got to do it with control, so if you're losing control, just bail and come into Hanumanasana, okay? Instead of going right back out, we're going to hold it for a moment. Square off that right thigh. See how I work that ball of foot. Breath. Feel your power more than your uh, sinking to gravity. And then we place the right hand a little bit forward of the right shoulder. See the diagonal line. Big toe. Grab them. You can drag that back knee in a little so you can lift it. Shrug the left hip back. It's okay if you take your whole damn mat. It doesn't matter. Float back up, swivel the right foot. See how I bend my right knee, lift, gaze up, back to wild thing, da da da, you get the idea, and then to down dog. Okay, so I know it's a big one. If it feels too much, just know where to stop and see how you can make your way to Hanuman anyway. Ready? Downward dog. If you're like, I need to rest for a moment, sit purposefully. All right, down dog. Be in the middle of your mat. If your feet are right near the back of your mat, you're probably gonna fall off your mat and that will be a pretty scary transition on a slippery floor. Okay. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, spin the hip open and bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, wild thing. Land the ball of the foot, ripple up. Express what is there without forcing it. You know what I'm saying? Good, now calibrate to side plank. Look, you know, tuck your chin a little, float the left knee up to the sky. You're gonna put that right toe on the floor. There we go. Kick the foot up or keep the knee bent and grab the big toe with left hand. Straighten the leg and reach up. So if this is where you wanna work, work here. Now tone the pitch, start to look forward. Come on to the ball of your right foot, square your tummy down and bring the left leg into Hanumanasana. If you're resting, rest intentionally for a moment. That's it. Good way to work with that. Feel your power. So we're embracing the flow literally today too. We ready? Plant the right hand about in line with the knee is right for most of us. Make sure it's, if the right hand's under the right shoulder, it's too close. You have to walk it forward more. 
Drag that back knee in a little, just barely, just barely, and lift the back knee up. Holding the big toe, yeah? Catch that big toe, lift back knee. Come back to Vashi Stasana, open to the left. Spin that right heel to the floor, point the toes, left leg up, sacrum in. Inhale, exhale, wild thing, ball of the foot. Inhale, open it, express it. If you wanna do wheel, this would be a good opportunity now. Don't force it though. If it's not there yet, sometimes it's a mental thing too. Fear is sometimes intelligence. If you took it into wheel, you're going to turn the right hand out to the right till the fingers point out and step back to down dog. Strong group today. Ooh, okay, big breath. Let it go. We have one more side of this. Yes. Inhale, stretch the right leg up and back, three legged. Exhale, spin the right hip open and bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, wild thing, ball of the foot. Take a breath or two, express it. I'm a big fan of having both knees bent. Inhale, exhale, start to calibrate. So tucking the chin a little will help. Float the right knee up to the sky. Kick the right foot up, grab the big toes. So you have to kick the foot towards your tummy a little bit. Catch it for Vashi. Look to the left hand, bend the left knee a little, really buffer it, start to swivel the right thigh forward. Ball of back foot, it's all core control and shoulder control, Hanumanasana. I'm into it for a moment. And here's the work. It's like work your way in and also know, you know, some days the body's more open than others. You don't hold a comparison point if you can help it. In the breath. Heart wide, left ribs pointing forward, not out. Ready? Plant the left hand in line with the left knee, a little forward of the shoulder, about six inches. Grab the right big toe. Lean into the left hand. Drag that left leg in a little bit. Ball of left foot, lift the left knee. Drag the right foot back. Back to Vashistasana. Lift the leg. Inhale. Exhale, wild thing, land it, express it. Join us if you've been resting for a moment. Connect or not. And when you go to flip it over, turn the left hand out till the fingers point to the left and flip it back to down dog, straightening out. Massive breaths, great work. And then I want you to hop onto your knees like camel or just lower down and kneel. Stand up on the knees. Okay. Bring your knees hip distance, feet hip distance as well. So I wanna show you something briefly. It's not that complex, but just do watch. Okay. So we're gonna wave our way into camel. I'm gonna pull the shoulders up, start to lift. We roll them down the back. Pull back. We do it three times, rolling up, lifting the ribs, arching. And then one more, and this time you're gonna keep it pulling up, shrugging, lifting, lifting, lifting the ribs, shoulders down the back, head back. Catch the feet at the same time, okay? To roll out, arms hang, vertebrae by vertebrae, okay? This will be hopefully a more easeful moment. So go ahead and stand on your knees. Lila, jump in here if you can. Arms by the sides, let the arms hang. Find the flow, inhale, shrug your shoulders up. Knees are hip distance, feet are hip distance, are they? You must need to check. Exhale, shrug the shoulders down the back and arch. And instead of me yapping, find your way here. Find your way. Knees are hip distance. That means the knees are not together. Find the, find the flow again. So if you got thrown off by something in that sequence, moving on. Accept the ability to continue forward even if it feels interesting. There you go, find it, access. What inside of you needs to be set free right now? What inside of you do you need to let go? Next time you start to arch, take it into Ustrasana, catching the heels. Hold steady. Squeeze mula. And whatever is happening right now, can you start to hone in on one pointed attention? 
Grow the thighs forward as you simultaneously grow the heart upwardly. You feel the power in your own breath. Good, inhale, roll out. Let the arms hang today, learn something new. Take a seat on the heels. Brilliant, yes. Grab your knees and round your spine like cat for a moment, holding your thighs. See how you feel. And then come to neutral. All right. So we're going to, now we're starting to really build, okay? Go ahead and grab your blanket or a little pillow. I'm gonna grab my blanket. And what you're going to do is have a little safety for your head. If you don't need it for Lagu Vajrasana, you don't. But I know a lot of us are right there and we're just a little scared. So check this out. And again, it's not just a static hold. So a lot of us do Ashtanga or have had some experience with holding things statically with me. This is gonna be more of a pulse. So you're gonna put the blanket about a foot behind your feet. I have a really long torso, um, few of you do too. So it might need to be a little further back. If you have a shorter torso, it's a little closer to your feet. Hopefully I measured right. Hopefully you do too. Because here's what's gonna go on, okay? The arms are gonna dangle. Again, knees and feet are hip distance. That's really crucial for your low back safety. We kind of find this wave again, okay? Shrug up, start to feed the hips forward as you shrug up, make sure you're watching right now. Roll the shoulders down the back, let the head go back. Catch the narrow part of your calf. So it's halfway between the ankle and the thick part of the calf. Rock forward, rock back. Even if you could go all the way back at once, flirt with this. Push the shins down. See so if you can tap, lift, okay? Either halfway or all the way. Exhale, tap, inhale, lift. Try for five. Keep the arms going straight. So we're starting to cultivate some of the drop back energy now. If your head doesn't go all the way to the floor, go halfway each time. That is equivalent. It's equal in value. We're learning the actions. Yes, stand on your knees. Do you have your pillow? You know if you need it or not. Arms by the sides. And someone's like, ha ha. It's like, do I need it? Mm. <laughs> if in doubt, you need it. Okay. Stick your hips behind you. Ready? Inhale, shrug the shoulders up. Breathing, breathing. Start to lift the ribs out of the low back. Start to lift your chest. Arch back. Roll the shoulders down the back. Head back. Grab the narrow part of your calves. Thumbs in, long fingers out. Grab hard. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. Read a hold a little higher up towards your calf. Not there, little, just an inch higher than where you were. Keep going, everyone. Right there, Rita. Lock your elbows. Halfway or all the way. If you get stuck, just surrender and lay on your back. <laughs> Good. If you're feeling it and you're like, I almost got it, it's okay if you can't come up, tap the head and lay on your back or come back up. After you've had your fill, Sit upright and release. So here's the truth about this. I don't know anyone that's gotten that on their first try or even sometimes their 10th try. So if you haven't done it a lot, again, self-love over trying to create some form. Okay, ditch the pillow as novel as that was. Come on to all fours. Come into down dog. I sounded very um, Illinois in there. Down dog, <laughs> lift up and back. Believe it or not, I think some of this work we're about to do, you may find easier than the pattern practices. So take a breath, let it go. Lift your heels and tiptoe your feet forward between your hands. Flat palms or not, depending on the state of your back right now. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold, palms down, head down. Cool. I just reach the arms forward and up. Inhale, stand tall. And simply lower the arms forward and down. Samastitihi. Okay, it's time to go to the wall. So please bring your yoga mat to the wall. And ideally, if you can, you also bring your camera to where I can see you. 
Okay. Now, there's a little limitation with my camera angle in that you're only going to get a front view. So I want to make sure that you kind of hear the cues. And actually, I just had this nifty realization. I can actually use my half wall. So give me just a second here. Oh, the things we learn when we pay attention. <laughs> I've been trying to grapple with this for like the whole day. How will they see me? Here's the answer. You will. All right. Take your time. So we're going to start with something familiar-ish. And that's doing kapotasana at the wall. And for those of you who have been doing it a lot, there's always more to understand here and to cultivate here, okay? So please give me your eyes. And I want you to really pay attention to the way I work the shoulder, the way I grow my arms. So I'm gonna start with my feet. That's about a foot from the wall, give or take. Okay, so it's a little further um, than I might naturally go if left to my own devices. So same for you. This time we will have the hands at prayer because it's gonna give you a little more leverage, a little more safety. Okay, knees are hip distance, click the toenails down. Same kind of wave, the anterior tilt, low belly does pull in, inhale, start to lift. Shoulders lift, exhaling when you need to, hips forward and then lift your heart again. So you try to bring your hips directly over the knees, try not to come too far forward or you'll feel imbalanced and also jam your sacrum, okay? So we're, watch again. As the hips roll forward, the chest lifts. So we're really cultivating the wave that we often, you know, work towards. Shrug up, shrug up, shrug up, shrug up, and then offer the head back. So the legs take the weight. You have to push the shins down, push the toenails down. Bring the thumbs towards the chin. Hopefully you can hear me. Hook into the chin. Reach back. Bring your hands to the initial part of the wall, wherever they land, and grow the arms as straight as they can be. Okay, if you have more freedom, moving the hands at the same time, float a little lower, hug the elbows in, and try to straighten the arms again. So really lifting the heart. Shift the weight into the leg, float lower. Maybe you can come all the way. So fingertips on the floor, same thing. Hug the elbows in and grow. Breathing, hold that big straight line. Either walk up the wall or roll out without it. So I want you to keep your arms as straight as they can be because that's gonna really inform the rest of our time together. So go ahead and come to your wall. If you're needing to rest now, take a supported bridge with a block under your sacrum. Kneel, go about a foot. Most of you have about the same range. So, you know, a foot, if you feel a little tighter today, go a little further. Bring your hands to heart center. Prayer position. Knees, feet, hip distance. If you do make sure, make sure you're on it with that. Okay, as you're ready, tip your hips back. Lean your butt back and move your heart up. Inhale, exhale, start to roll the hips forward and lift the chest at the same time. Start to grow. You take many breaths. You need to pull the shoulders up towards the ears. It's really unattractive actually, but start to lift your ribs, lift, lift. As you go to drop your head back, shoulders roll down the back. Look at the wall and then bring the prayer thumbs under your chin. Hook into your chin and express that little throat opening. Then bring the hands to the wall. There we go. That's what's up. Hold the initial place you land. It's really easy to try to go deeper. Don't, acceptance. And now shift the weight forward a little and then float the hands lower on the wall. You can walk down if you need, but I'd rather you take them down at the same time if you have the ability. And then float again, a little lower. Float to a good place to stay and hold it for about five breaths. That's it, Mark. Hug the elbows in. Good. And then you're going to push the wall away and roll out. Head is the last thing to lift, palms in prayer. Take a seat on the heels. Fantastic. Yeah. Grab your knees and round your back. Make sure you're breathing, breathing. If you need to rest sooner, you rest. You definitely don't skip Shavasana though. Okay. Okay. So that went well. That went well enough that we're building right away. Okay. Give me your attention. 
taking a different stance for a moment is totally fine. Now we're going to do what we call ekapada kapotasana, okay? So in a moment, you'll be in this little boxy lunge and I was way too close to the wall. You're gonna have your right foot back, your left foot's in a lunge shape. If your knee hurts, pad it. Okay, same distance from the wall, basically. Here's the vibe, all right? This is a little challenging, so you need to be really careful. A little sassy butt, heart lifting, inhale. Same little tuck. Start to lift. You have to really work that balance. That's why we did so much pattern practice with lunging today. This is why. Shoulders up, shoulders up, shoulders up, shoulders down, head back. Hook the chin for a moment, look for the wall and touch. Grow into it. This time you're gonna have to crawl down. Go to a good place, crawl down, okay? Let me touch the baseboard, push and radiate the heart up. Crawl up, it's a little harder. Roll out, kneel. Pause. Okay, let's do it. So basically step into a lunge. You want your left foot forward and your right leg back. Right toe is about a foot from the wall. Feel it out. And Lila, hang on a second. Put your hands at heart center. Left foot is forward, so you're in that lunge. Hug the outer hips in, ready? Little sassy butt, stick the butt out, move the heart forward, inhale. Exhale, roll the hips forward, start to lift, start to arch. Lila, take supportive bridge and let that anchor. Hook the thumbs into the chin, arch. Touch the wall, that's it, there we go, good aim. Move your hips forward a little bit, dear ones, and see if you can walk the hands down the wall a little. That's it, Mark. Vic, I'm, yeah, I see you, Vicky, yeah. Walk down a little more if you got it. Take your time. Lila, lay first, then you put the block under the hips. Good, pal. Anna, take your hands down another two inches. The shoulders will give it. There it is. To come out, you either crawl up or push off if you have a lot of leg strength there. Whew. Okay, Just tuck the left leg back, sit on the heels for a moment. I've only taught this in a group class once and I love this one. So I hope you I hope you like it too. If you don't though, we can try to stay neutral. Let's do the other side. So um, dear ones, stand on your knees and you're gonna step your opposite right foot forward. If it's not your opposite, that's not really that big of a deal. You can change them. Okay, hands on hips. It's a little boxy lunge. Doesn't remind you of crouching warrior a little. Right, left knees in line with hip, by the way, you ready? Little sassy butt, hands at heart, excuse me, look at me doing it wrong. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, roll the hips forward, start to lift. Now take a lot of time here. Shrug the shoulders up, start to peel open. Look for the wall. Hook your thumbs into your chin and look for the wall. Shoot the hands to the wall. Straighten your arms if you can. Keep rolling the elbows in and up and maybe crawl the hands down. Try to take pit stops. See where the body says yes and hold. Big breath, straight arm, grow the heart. Crawl out when you are ready. Take your time. Tuck the right leg in, rest. Catch your knees with your hands and round your spine again. So we're keeping very straightforward releases here today. Very straightforward. Lila, move that block down a little more. So it's under the sacrum, not the lumbar spine. A little lower towards your heels. Good, find neutral. All right, now, next thing. We're gonna try to drop back into capo without the wall, all right? And so I wanna show you, cause I don't want, some of you are already doing that, some of you are not, but those of you already doing it, I wanna bring a more dynamic energy in, okay? So we're gonna have hands in prayer. Just watch and then you'll get a chance to go at it. Sassy butt, belly in, toenails down, shoulders back. So that's your checkpoint, belly in, toenails down, 
shoulders back. Inhale, exhale, start to roll into this initial shape. So you're feeling the weight in your legs, right? We're feeling the lift of the ribs. I'm even hooking my forearms into my ribs. Shoulders down, head back. So you can stay right here. You can stay contained or shift the hips forward a little. Reach the arms. Aim your fingertips down, okay? Rock forward, rock back. You can go halfway. See that? Or you can touch, lift. Exhale, touch. Inhale, lift, straight arms. Exhale, touch. Inhale, lift. If you're doing that, last one, crawl in, touch the toes with your index finger and try to straighten the arms. It's pretty intense. Rolling out the same way you entered. Okay, so what's different is that you're working more with the flow rather than the, mm, I'm committed and I'm stuck. So we're starting to learn these transitions. That's our focus. Okay, so off the wall or at the wall again. You can absolutely do it at the wall again if you want. Stand on your knees. I feel like this wall is driving me nuts. You can come off of it if you need. You ready? Knees hip distance, feet hip distance, hands at heart. Find sassy butt, belly in, toenails down, shoulders back. Inhale. Exhale, roll the hips forward to neutral pelvis, lift the chest, hook the forearms into the ribs, start to arch. Keep arching, keep lifting the side ribs up, 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 head back. When you're ready, when you're ready, that is the most important thing. Reach your arms overhead, hand shoulder distance. Aim your fingertips down the whole time. So you're ready, either tapping and lifting or holding. And if you tap, really roll. Fingertips, push. Fingertips, push. There you go, Anna. Fingertips, push. And your body proportions will tell you. Give a long torso, your hands are gonna land further from your feet, probably. The last one, when you walk in, make sure you're not schlepping those elbows out to the sides. Let it be an authentic flexibility from the spine. Try to grow the pelvis forward, heart up. And push off and roll out when you're ready. Very nice. Take a seat on the heels. Okay, hell yeah, everyone. Everyone work that exactly where they needed, wherever you were. Come on to all fours, take a break. You're almost there. And round your spine like a cat. Have faith. You know, it's like you all signing up and showing up are who guided this sequence. Take a few cat cows here. If it wasn't you all, it'd be a different sequence. So this is for you. Like I know you all, it's for you. We'll do one more cat and cow. Come to neutral and do pop into down dog for a moment and let's just check in with the sacrum. We've got 15 minutes more of challenging work and we get to chill. So if that's a good incentive, it may be. <laughs> Self-affirming breath. Exhaling. Okay, lower down onto your knees. So now everyone, I want you to pull off the wall um, for now, but I want you to know we, we may be coming back, okay? So maybe you can pull your mat like two feet from the wall so it's not in your immediate you know, way. And then I want you to get your strap. And now you are going to make a loop. And you want the loop to be what you deem is about shoulder distance apart for you. Okay. And if you were taking a little rest, this may be a little more grounding. So if not, you can go straight to free time. Okay, so you've got this loop. Here's where we're going. Now, this is gonna be a moment where I have my back to you, which is, you know, if you're a teacher, this isn't always advised, but occasionally it's very helpful for people to see what the heck you're doing. This is one of those moments, okay? So I'm bringing my loop friend over. 
This is for Kapinjalasana or raindrop drinking bird pose, okay? So I've got my loop in my right hand already. It's already I'm already holding it, I'm on all fours. I'm gonna step the left hand a little out to the left, like an inch from where it was. And then I swivel my left foot to point back. So I swivel my left foot to point straight back. I'm gonna step my right foot out to the right. And it's kind of informal. It's not this straight leg, just step it out to the right. Right now, see your left hand is a little forward of your left shoulder. That's really important for this posture. You're going to square the right thigh down and float the leg up. Knee is already bent. Reach your right hand back, foot flexed, and loop the foot in the strap. Okay, hold the loop like well, like hold it tight. Press your pelvis forward. So I'm pressing it away from you all. Kick the foot back, start to pull the foot towards the shoulder. Flip the right elbow up and start to roll the bicep towards the ear. Hug the elbow in. I like to touch the arm to the side of my head and then you can kick the foot back, okay? Growing the leg and arm straighter maybe. You either drop the strap or you reverse. Don't worry about the strap so much till you come to all fours and then you can fix it and change sides, okay? So this is Kapinjalasana, or it's really a modified version. Raindrop drinking bird pose. So strap in hand, all fours. Strap in right hand. It's better to hold the strap. That way you're gonna eventually you're gonna hold your foot. You're not gonna be able to prepare it, okay? Step your left hand an inch out to the left. Swivel the left foot to point straight back to the left side of your mat. Step your right foot out to the right and ground the foot. So it's kind of in line with your left knee. Now lift your right arm up. Lift the right leg off the floor. Inner thigh squares down. Reach your right heel towards your butt. Reach back and loop the foot in the strap. Flexing the foot is what you want to do because that'll be what happens when you flip your grip. Now press your pelvis forward in the direction of your navel. Start to draw the foot towards the shoulder. Pull it in lovingly. Rotate the right elbow up and bring the elbow forward. Good, now feel it and then kick the foot back and express the expansion element. That's what's up, good. You don't look up on this one. If anything, you look forward towards the front of your mat. If you're balanced only, try to expand. Beautiful, two more breaths. Rock on, either drop it if you're losing balance or reverse flip the grip. Yay, all fours first, and then you can worry about the strap. It's just safer. Now go ahead and creatively take the strap off and bring the strap forward and hold the strap in your left hand. So hold the loop. You're on all fours. Step the right hand out to the right another inch from where it was, finger spread. Swivel the right foot to point straight on back to the right long end of your mat. Now pause, see the knee and hand in line, right? And step the left foot out to the left. Ready, lift the left hand, lift the left leg, thigh squares down, flex the foot to loop the foot. Cause if you're gonna hold your foot one day, you have to flex it to grab it. So better to learn it now and then start to kick the foot back. As you kick it straight back, pull the foot towards the shoulder, rotate the left elbow up, forward and in. Once you get it, kick the foot back. Feed the pelvis in or forward. If anything, you look forward towards the front of the mat and straighten the left arm. Breathing. Good, reverse flip the grip or drop it. Turn to all fours. Keep the strap off. Come to down dog for a moment. Land, let it land. Lengthen through the sides. Big breath. Let it go. And then lower down. One more demo. I think there's either one more or two more demos today, depending on the group. So rest and watch. I'm sure some of you can assume you know where this is going. We're not going to use the wall because everyone seemed pretty stable, okay? So I've got the strap in my right hand. 
this is the kind of um, original OG version of Kapinjalasana. Come into down dog. You know, step the left foot in a little from where it is. Okay. Remember side plank. Why do we do so many? There's always a reason, isn't there? Now look at my left hand. It's way the hell forward of the shoulder, isn't it? That's the only way this pose is actually sustainable for your shoulders, in my experience, in my opinion. You know, lift the right leg up. That's your first kind of balance test. Press your pelvis forward. So I'm pressing it towards my door. That's my front door. I would love to see you all walk through it one day. I'm gonna hook the foot. If the strap's too big, hold it tighter. See what I'm doing there? Start to press your pelvis forward more, pull the foot towards the shoulder and flip the grip. My left toes are on the floor, as you can see, and you kick back, try to expand. Don't reverse flip, don't choke on the strap either. You can take wild thing if you want and then flip it back. Drag the strap along. <laughs> Best of luck to you on that part of the thing. Okay, you ready? Yay. Hold the strap in your right hand. Come into down dog. Pin the loop in your hand. If you feel like there's a better way to do it, you may try, of course. Step your left foot in an inch from where it is. Now swivel the left toes to the right. Spin the left foot to the floor. So you're gonna bend the left knee. You stack the legs momentarily. Lift the right hand up, float the right leg up, like bend the knee, kick the foot back a little, round that left big toe by keeping the left knee bent at least a little, loop the foot in the strap, feed your pelvis forward, press it towards the long end of the mat, pull the foot towards the shoulder, be reverent, flip the grip. There we go, good aim. If you fall back, it's okay, it happens a lot. Just press your pelvis forward more next time, you're gonna get it. Good, nice, Lila. Lift the hips up a little bit, Vic. Yay. Take your time, release when ready. No rushes now, no rush. You have earned this one, so don't rush. Here's that radical, I'm whole no matter what. Hashtag fuck that pose, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Downward facing dog. Okay, good, I'm glad you're laughing. Lower down on your knees for a moment. If you're working on it still, do your thing, do your thing. Okay, here's a thing that catches people on this one. And I wanna point it out because I think it's helpful. And I actually think I need to give you a different angle so you see. There's two things that make people fall out of this posture, okay? besides just overall like feeling stiff and all that, which is common. I know for me, some, sometimes this posture feels great, other times I leave it. So you can have the same thing, right? Watch how I keep my hips stacked. I think that's a crucial element in this. I just don't know if I emphasized it enough. So when I come into this, if I spin open right away, I'm gonna fall, okay? So think of this, lift, but keep the top hip moving you know, forward. So in this case, it's to the left. Then you can reach carefully, flex the foot. See how I'm just kind of patiently working it around the right big toe. And then when you go to flip it over, keep that left hip stacked. So it's got to come from your hip extension, your glute engagement, all that good stuff. So the hip doesn't spin back. That's going to take some time. Then you're kicking. Kicking, growing longer than the gaze. So if you're in a rush for the gaze, it ain't gonna happen, okay? Let's try the other side, woo! Strap underneath your left hand, down dog. Hopefully that was helpful. Step your right foot in an inch from where it is. Swivel on to the outside edge of the right foot. Subsequently, ground the sole of the right foot by bending the knee a little. Stack up the legs, left arm up, left leg up. Flex the foot and loop. Feed the pelvis forward as you start to reach. Pull the leg. Breathing. 
Pull that leg in, Anna. There we go. Careful. It's okay. If it doesn't happen on an injured joint, it's not meant to. There we go. Breath. Surf that balance. Ha, ah, it's humbling that one. Express what's needed. We'll meet in down dog. Take a moment or two. And then lower down onto your knees when you're ready. If you just finished, you need to wait. Take a rest, take the weight off the hands. Okay, right freaking on, everyone. We've got one more on the recipe book and we're kind of all with it. So we're gonna go for it. Okay, let me let one of you in, hold on. Okay, so that was really great. Did everyone feel like that's a little humbling that one? A little bit maybe, or is it fun? It's kind of both humbling and fun and annoying. Okay, one more. So here's what you'll do is you'll unloop your strap again. I know we're playing musical strap chairs today. So unloop it. If you have a quick release one like I do, you need to pull the buckles to the ends so they're not hindering you. And once you've done that, just get to a watching place. So I guess by now, especially those of you who don't come to a lot of workshops, this is really the difference. The workshops are more broken down. We're demoing, so we have an example, all that good stuff. So if you're a teacher and you're thinking about doing workshops, they've gotta be different than a class, okay? Can't be the same. Gotta, gotta slow it down and, and create some new stuff from the things that are traditional. That's enough of the lecture though. Okay, so I'm propped on my forearms here. I'm gonna stretch each leg back a little bit. So I'm making room, squaring off, bending knees. This is where you're going to have a humorous moment, maybe watching me try to do this. Okay, so you're going to have the tail in your left hand, the left hand turns in a little. You're gonna reach back and loop the strap around the tops of the feet. And then you pull this strap all the way forward and you find your way, and I'm gonna pin it with my elbow to hold it. So you have an end of the strap in each hand. Okay, see where I'm going there? I'm holding the strap. Now, I'm gonna take a moment using my core. And I'm gonna walk my hands down the strap a little and I'm gonna get myself into a flip grip position. So you can see it's a little awkward. Bring your elbows forward, bend your knees and grab on. So this is gonna take some maneuvering. I promise you this is easier maybe than I'm making it look. So you have to kind of finagle it. Crawl the hands down the strap. Keep pushing your feet into it so you don't lose your grip. Exhale, anchor your pubic bone. Draw the elbows forward, lift the knees. Roll the elbows forward and then, okay? You can stay right there and lift from that place, kicking the feet up. Roll the thighs in and try to straighten the elbows. Tip your chin up. Keep the glute clench out of it. Maybe go back, forward, back, forward. Elbows down and then release. Okay, so I know that looks like a lot. It's actually not as much as you think. It's not harder than what you just did. Okay, last one, got this. So have the strap in hand and lower onto your belly. Thanks for watching. <sighs> Prop up on your forearms. Stretch each leg back a little, make room. Bend your knees. Now, most of us are right-handed. Swivel the left forearm in. So you're holding one end of the strap in your left hand. Reach your right hand back and loop it around the tops of the feet. If you can swing it back differently, go for it. I prefer to do one and then the other. See what works. Now walk the hands down the strap. Take your time. Flip your palms up. Good, Rita. Walk, you know, get your elbows on the floor. So the further you are from your feet, the, the, the shallower the back bend. So, you know, try to hold taut. 
That's why all the work takes, right? If you went into it too easy, it's probably too loose, yeah? All right, you ready? Hands reach back, palms up. Exhale, anchor your pubic bone. Inhale, lift your knees, lift your chest, bend your elbows like we're doing shoulder flossing. Draw your elbows down. Here we go, pal. Start to roll the elbows forward and up. Yes, hell yes. That's it, everyone. Now kick the feet up and grow in it. And elbows, you've got it. Just loosen the strap a little so you can flip it. Lift your knees off the floor. Feet will be together on this one. There you go. Kick the feet up. Try to straighten your arms as well. Tip the chin up. There we go. If you want to get the momentum, rock a little bit. Your pubic bone might yell at you. Think it's all mula. Squeeze mula and kick back. Get what you get what you need from it, and then you release by reverse flipping the grip and dropping. Elbows on the floor, knees up, and release. Take a pause, take a breath or two. Relax. No back bend right now. Relax. Okay. <sighs> Place your hands under your shoulders. Push to all fours, inhale, in down dog, exhale. Inhaling, exhaling. Lower your knees to the floor and sit upright for a moment. Sit on your heels. So here's the thing, you've come this far. Do you wanna do that one more time and see if you get a little more range? Yes, no, thumb up, thumb down. We have a yes, we have several yeses. So if you're a hard no, lay on your back and roly poly around. If you're a hard yes, let's do it again, okay? Just two times sometimes is, is going to give you more understanding. So go ahead and come back down. I saw some of you flip the strap over your head to get it. I have no problem with that too. Sphinx it up. Stretch each leg back a little bit, scoop the eyes square down, bend your knees. If you're following my lead on how to loop, pin it with your left hand, get it around both feet. We're like becoming entangled with our strap. Our straps are really gonna smell like our sweat mana. Good, and this time what I want you to try is hold the strap in both hands out in front with your elbows on the floor. Draw your elbows forward a little. Pull the feet in. This feels, I think this feels really good. It's like a really great traction. Okay, and then see if you can pin it with one hand, like pin the right side of the strap with your left hand, slide the right hand, you know, closer to the right shoulder, pin the left strap with your right hand and do the same thing with your left hand. So you're gonna tighten it up here, anchor your pubic bone, and then take your arms out to the sides. Take them back for a moment and maybe crawl your hands towards the feet a little more. You have to keep kicking the feet into the strap, maybe tighten it more than you did. Then you try to, you know, see if you can bend your elbows down. If you can't, you're too close. Back off, anchor pubic bone, ready, lift. Kick your knees up, rotate the elbows forward. Out and up. Once you've got your elbows shoulder distance, try to really hug them in, okay? And then grow in it. Square the knees in, lift the feet, lift the heart. Hand shoulder distance. Maybe roll onto your thighs. And then roll back down. Bend your elbows, keep your knees off the ground, put your elbows on the floor. See if your feet can come close to your head. Knees up, heart up and release. Oh my, pillow and rest. <sighs> if that workshop doesn't teach you about flipping grip, I don't know what does. <laughs> As you're ready, hands under elbows, come into up dog, inhale, express it, down dog. It's all downhill from here, babes. Take a couple breaths. Side body long. 
then lower into child's pose. If the strap is in your way, move it. Sometimes I'm fine with the disarray and I just leave it there. <sighs> now, as you're here, anchor for a moment in Balasana, in child's pose. Feel your lower back start to receive the counter. And then gently sit upright. Swing your legs around. Take a seat and lay onto your back. Great job. As you lay back, give your knees a hug in because, oh yeah, rock the body. Rock the body side to side. So here's what I want you to connect. All those shoulder turning drills, the wild things, side planks, all that was to inform these later poses. So as you're on your back rocking, you're integrating, right? Grounding. Whatever happened there today? Purnamada, I am whole. Purnamidam, there is whole. Everywhere is whole. This moment is complete. Center the rocking. Oh, we so need a twist. Open your arms out to the sides, palms up. Set the feet on the ground for a moment. Scoot your hips to the left a couple inches so you come onto your right outer hip. Hear me out, curl the knee. <clears throat> As I choke, hold on. <coughs> wow. <coughs> Woo. Little throat chakra clearing. One moment. Scoot your hips to the left a little. Knees will point to the right. Curl the knees in and then reach the feet up. Straight legs and lower the feet into your right hand. Sorry for the uh, choking. <laughs> Turn your head opposite of the twist. Relax the body. Self-love, reverence. Squeeze the legs together, belly in. Inhale, bring your legs up. <clears throat> Set the feet on the floor and center the pelvis. Scoot the hips opposite to the right a little. So you come on to the left outer hip, curl the knees in, reach the feet up, twist the legs to the left, land them in your left hand or where they land, land them. Look opposite of the twist. Breathe fully. Hmm. Squeeze the legs together, belly in, inhale, legs up. Feet on floor to center hips. You can also use your core, so really just feel it. Curl the knees into the abdomen, catch the backs of the thighs and rock up to seated. Cross-legged, cross your right leg in front of your left, and then either stay there or come into Agni Stambhasana, log stacking pose. So in that case, you're going to hook your right ankle onto the 
you know, top of the left knee. Square your right hip back. And whether you're cross-legged or in log stacking, please fold forward. It's gonna feel probably pretty engaged right now. So be easy on yourself. The shoulders relax. If it's really hard to fold in log stacking, please go to cross-legged instead. It will be the same kind of release, setting the groundwork for cross leg or for log stacking eventually. Take some breaths. As you inhale, come up. Change the crossing, simple. Either back to cross-legged or to log stacking. <laughs> Clip your left hip back a little. And when you are ready, fold forward. Just some easeful releasing now. Hands can crawl forward and dropping. Be breathful, keep grounding into that. Let the tension fall off. And then as you inhale, come up. Oh. Fingertips brace beside your outer hips, shift back a little, unwind your legs, <clears throat> straighten them in front. And then from here, let's do come to Upavishta. Slide the legs out at the same time. One hand behind and one hand in front of the pelvis, scoot forward a little. Try to deepen the straddle a bit. See that the feet are symmetrical. And once you're in a decent place here for your body, go ahead and fold forward. Forearms down, maybe walking the hands forward, forehead down. If you have a lot of um, malleability here, maybe chin on the floor. Take some breaths. Getting ready to rest, so let the breathing Mirror that energy, slowing it down. Keep the shoulders from rounding forward because we already have a lot of that, right? Three more breaths. Power of concentration is that even if the mind is busy, you just see it for what it is, passing clouds. All right, inhale, come up slowly with love, with reverence. Ah, catch the backs of the knees. Bring the legs together by bending the knees. Either go straight onto your back or add one more vinyasa if you're like, really feeling the call to reset your sacrum. Otherwise, time to rest, woo woo. What a journey. Take your time. And you know, we're, some of us are in NorCal, some of us are in Hawaii. So just do what you need to be warm, okay? And if you're too warm, do what you need to be cool. And we will have a really nice Shavasana. Yay. And if you've made it this far, you know, reminder that this is kind of the best part. 
dim your lighting. I see one or two of you doing that. That's a fantastic idea. If it is dark where you are. <clears throat> and let, let yourself just land. I'm gonna read you the meaning of that mantra we chanted, that Shanti mantra we chanted in the beginning because it's so relevant and it's so important to be reminded. You are fullness. There is fullness. Here is fullness. From the fullness, the fullness is born. Remove the fullness from the fullness and the fullness alone remains. Peace, peace, peace. We don't need this practice to make up for some part of ourselves that is feeling insufficient because this will only lead to more insatiability if we approach it that way. We need this practice to reveal our fullness, to reveal the divinity that always is there knocking on our door every moment of existence. So this practice isn't, in, isn't to add on something that we're lacking. It's to take away that which is blocking us from seeing our resplendence, our light. So the asanas really are just a tool. If we cling to the form, we miss the mark. If you were to cling to anything, cling to the feeling right now of ease within yourself. This is the point. So rest wholeheartedly. You feel the body spread like water on dry dirt. Spread and sink and feel the magnetic field of the earth embracing you as part of its flow, as part of this wholeness that we call the universe. And let the mind drop, the facial muscles dropping, the eyes dropping. Chime in in a few minutes.
Feel your heart beating. Take a breath that hugs the heart, that wraps it like a big bear hug. Let it go with ease. With your next breath, very gently begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes. And stretch the body full length. Curl the knees in one and then the other, do one at a time. So they're both curled in. Hug if you need. It doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> it's helpful. And when you are ready, loves, do roll to your right side. And ease your way up. Take a seat that feels empowering. And once you are there, I want to chant our mantra one more time. That way it kind of lands, it sandwiches this practice, it bookends it, and hopefully we, we retain it. Palms in Anjali Mudra. Take a, we're going to do the Om and then follow straight in, okay? If you want to pull it up on the screen, uh, feel free. Not a bad idea. Okay, ready? Take a deep breath. Exhale all of the air. Inhale for Om. Poor Namada, poor Namidam, poor Nat. Or namura chate, or nasya por namadaya, or nameva vashishyate. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Bow the head to the heart. Acknowledge the fullness that you are. Cultivating contentment, supreme joy is gained straight from the Yoga Sutras. Where we find contentment is we find the wholeness within. Take a deep breath. Namaste. Right. Those of you here live, thank you. For those of you doing the recording later, thank you. I send my love. <laughs>